caps on. Can you please, with your respect, take them off? Can we all stand up? Except for the families. Can the family, can the choir, the handsome guys, very handsome indeed, can you please lead us? People at the back, can you please assist? Faster, please. No one must come in from the door now. Thank you. Over to you. Go see, see, lady, Africa. Malupala nisu pondolayo Izwa imitandazo yetu Gosi sigelela tina Lusapolwayo Chaba sa Yesu, o feri se din tuali matwenye ho, o si buluke, o si buluke, si chaba sa Yesu, si chaba sa. South Africa, South Africa, and the blow fan on say, and it is the fall of or of Sounds the call to come together and united we shall stand. Let us live and strive for freedom in South Africa. Thank you very much. Are you going to proceed with the other one? We are with a very important country with us today.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much to the choir. The former deputy president of the Republic, Minister Ram Cooper, deputy ministers that are here, the High Commissioner of Tanzania and his entourage, the family and the colleagues. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Sisi Dolashe. I'm go going to be the core program director of this August program. We are behind time, therefore we need to be faster in everything that we're doing. You are most welcome, all of you. We are here on a historical mission that does not talk to South Africa only, but a mission that talks to two countries, but the whole continent as well as the entire world. The history is her history, which is not written in majority of times. Today, we are not going to write it. We are just going to reflect on it. We hope from now, for people who have been able to take us to where we are today, they will proceed to write this history so that all of us get to understand the role that has been played by women in putting this country where it is today, in making sure that Africa becomes a continent that should be recognized as such. Also to understand that during the we human rights, which in South Africa we have declared that human rights are women's rights, it is no coincidence that we're going to celebrate this history that have been written by the heroines of our country. I am now going to call upon the chaplaincy that is going to lead us. My dear Reverend, can you please forward, come forward? Thank you very much, and over to you. Malbongwe! Ikamala Makoskas! Malbongwe! Ikamala Makoskas! Thank you very much. Over to you, Mfundiswa. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you to the family. Above all, thank you to God. May I take this opportunity to greet the minister in the presidency, Mewaruna, Memaruping, the deputy ministers, all of them, uh, the ambassadors, our heroes and heroines who had made this to be possible for us to be here. And to be safe, let me say protocol observed. I am just going to do a commendation. Commendation, it is when you are not preaching, but you are receiving and welcoming our mother, my colleague. Yes, I'm a pastor, but I'm also a nurse. Our activist, a woman who made it a point that in nursing becomes nursing even abroad. So in doing that, I will read from the book of First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3, which says, As we talk to our God and Father about her, Umama Wetu, we think of her faithful work, her loving deeds, and her continual anticipation of the return to the Lord. Why I'm saying this? Because all of us, we are one day 
going to leave this world. But what is good about what we are seeing today, I was saying that to the family, that in everything we must give thanks to God, irrespective of whether it's death, sickness, anything, because it comes from God. We sang that song with the family inside there to say, Tata, it cannot be Ipati. Our mother, our sister, our colleague has come back to us now in South Africa. But what type of a sister is this one? She was a sister who, at the height of repression, she saw it fit, not her alone, with others, about 20 which were recruited by the African National Congress to ensure that nursing continues wherever, irrespective of the repression. They were recruited by Otatabe to Otata Oo Artambo. But what is profound about them, they had what we call five-point plan. Not five-point plan of delivery of services, probably anything that we need to deliver to our people. Without wasting any time, I will just mention those five point plans, which Umama Wetu Ukolega subscribed to, in particular, in relation to our nursing. She was our nightingale, and nurses know how it is to be a nurse, from training until the end, from when the child is born, when we have the milestones, until the last offices, which we have today. Umama lived in faith in such a way that all other people can benefit to what she did. Her faith formed an inseparable part of other people's lives. She truly loved other people. First Corinthians chapter 13, though I walk but Umama practice the true love for other people, everyone. That is why we see what we are seeing today. Umama hold on to God's promises. And God's promises are yea and amen, which says, we have the promise of one day going to see our loved one, who is God. I was saying to the family, we need to thank God because there are families who don't have, who don't know where their loved ones are. They are wishing for what we are having right now. And for that, we really have to say, Having said that, I'm just giving five minutes. I must understand, but it's a year. Heavenly Father, will you please enable the family to take charge of the emotions that they're having right now? We know, Heavenly Father, you said in your word. We are Jehovah who comfort us in times like this, Holy Father. But you said, Lord, irrespective of the situation, you will never leave us nor forsake us, Holy Father. Father, I am asking you, Lord, for your unction of your Holy Spirit, Holy Father, to strengthen them, Holy Lord, for what our mother has done to us as a nation, the nation of South Africa, Holy Father. As we are going to start with the service right now, Lord, I'm asking your Holy Spirit to take control, to take charge in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
thank you very much, my pastor. And now I'm going to call upon Mama Obe Ines. Now, Suzo Visa, O Kabag, Bazagins, Umtanda Zoabo. We are fortunate today that we now know that there are many nurses that we can anticipate. We're going to call the Deputy Minister of Arts and Culture, Deputy Minister Mafu, Sister Mafu. So we use Sister Mafu for her to come forward. Over to you, Sister Mafu. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Minister Dolashe. At this point in time, we are just going to call upon uh, the Director for Nursing Education and Training, Ms. Pale, to come and explain the meaning of the lamp. Immediately after her, uh, Ms. Desirongwa, Director of Nursing Practice, will come and lead nurses on the pledge. We will do the meaning of the lamp and immediately after that we do the pledge. Good afternoon, ministers, family members. We are now going to indicate the meaning of the lamp. The lamp in your hand is the symbol of those who keep vigil over the sick. It is the symbol of the nursing profession that those who nurse should be a light unto others. It indicates that you are prepared to develop your profession and to practice it in the light of the sciences, which are the building blocks of medical and nursing science. It confirms that you are prepared to carry out your professional acts in accordance with the legal and ethical codes of your profession, and that you are prepared to care for another in his uniqueness with knowledge and compassion. It is a symbol that indicates that you are prepared to be the following to those who need your help. The eyes of the blind who are sick, the power of movement for those who cannot move, the hands of those who do not have the strength to care for themselves, the comforter of those who are, who are sick, the nourisher of those who cannot eat, the one who has to ward off the hazards threatening the sick, the protector of those who are helpless and those who are vulnerable, the mind of those who are unconscious, the intermediary between the doctor, the members of the health team, and the patient, the advocate to those who have health problems. It confirms that you as a professional nurse are prepared to submit to the discipline of your profession. It serves as proof that we have prepared to serve as a role model of your profession. I give you reveal of nursing. Let the oil of knowledge and love always ensure that your lap burns brightly. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Program Director. Uh, are we all living the, the lights as nurses? Can we switch them on?
Okay, thank you. Uh, can you follow me as I lead? I solemnly pledge myself to the service of humanity. And will endeavor to practice my profession with conscience and, and with dignity. I will maintain by all the means in my power the honor and the noble traditions of my profession. The total health of my patients will be my first consideration. I will hold in confidence all personal matters coming to my knowledge. I will not permit considerations of religion, nationality, race, or social standing to intervene between my duty and my patient. I will maintain the utmost respect for human life. I make these promises, I make these promises. solemnly Freely, freely and upon my own. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, this is a profession that is noble, and I hope you all realize what Ankoleka did, because this is a pledge that we all take when we finish our training, and this is a pledge that every nurse lives by. I'm going to call upon uh, the choir to come and sing the family song as we are about to call a family member to come and speak. Tsengbani read, no ako boshongo ane no ako ni right. Sinizami le no ako. Bulela ni kuye hova guba. Oh, 
Rossi, Bonita, Sangue, Mandisi, Mandisi, Ungawe, Kosi, Ungisi, Yele, Mandipumle, Mandipumle, afternoon ministers and good afternoon everybody in the house at large. My name is Kolis Waskomolo. I am one of the family. We are one family with the Tuniswas. I think in our whole family I'm probably the only one who has survived as to remember when Sisno Zippo and Sis Kolega left. Uh, I was still at high school then, uh, doing matric, and when I came back home from the boarding house, my father said, oh, the new name of uh, Tanzania had not actually caught up at that time. So I remember them very well, and uh, in later years, when I went to Tanzania, they welcomed me. I actually went to Tanzania specifically to see them. So we as a family were completely overwhelmed by this reception. And I can tell you even more overwhelmed is Joyce, our nephew, that she was able to bring mama home for her to be buried amongst her own people. Thank you very much, Joyce for what you have done. We are today welcoming our sister, our mother, our, our grandmother, and our great-grandmother with joy. We are all overjoyed. In fact, the story of, the story of Sis Kolega and Sis Nozipo has brought to me an awareness of one part of our history in the struggle that has uh, become forgotten. It has fizzled into oblivion. And that is our own contribution to the skills of the newly independent African states. We did a lot of contribution. It wasn't just a one-sided com contribution. We talk a lot about how our African brothers contributed to the struggle. Yes, they did. They really sacrificed to help us fight apartheid. But we also contributed a lot in the building of skills in their own new nations, especially after they became independent. With the, with, with the wind of change that swept through Africa and, and resulted in most African countries getting their political independence from colonial Europe. It coincided with the intensification of oppression by the apartheid regime. With the introduction of apartheid, the apartheid laws that were being churned out to subjugate and to humiliate Africans, especially educated Africans, became so intensified they were churned in one after the other. And it became worse when Bantu education was uh, introduced. It created an exodus of the skills that were there. 
you will remember that South Africa had skills which by far surpassed the skills of other African countries. Because we had Forte, which started producing uh, 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 graduates as far back as 1916. We, the nursing profession went back as far as long, bef long before that with people like uh, uh, Cecilia Makiwani. And, and, and in South Africa, all teach, there was nothing like an unprofessional teacher. If you were a teacher, you had to be a professional. If you were at any level, whether it's primary or secondary, if you were a nurse, you had to be a professional state registered nurse. So we had these skills, which most of these uh, African countries did not have. So the story of these 20 nightingales who went into Tanzania is the story of so many of the independent countries of Africa. They all so much dependent on South African nurses at the beginning of their independence. They so much dependent on this on 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 on, on the or, or, on on the, on graduate teachers from South Africa because there was an exodus, especially after Bantu education. There was an exodus of graduate teachers who went into exile. Lesotho, Botswana, Swaziland, Zambia, Tanzania, Nigeria, and Ghana. They were the biggest beneficiaries of the skills that came out of here. Some of them were organized, like it was in the case of Sis Kolega and Sis Nozipo, but others were just trickling on their own. But they actually helped to create a skill base for these countries. So we should also thank ourselves that we did contribute. And this history is forgotten. It's never mentioned that we also had a contribution. It was not just a one-way thing. We also contributed. There was mutual assistance. So we are so happy today that our sister has come back. Our family is so overjoyed. And, and, and uh, I do not know what to say. I'm completely overwhelmed myself. And so I say to you, Sis Kolega, including your sister, Sis Nozipo, unfortunately, Sis Nozipo lost her life during the COVID. So she had a typical COVID funeral. But we are so happy that we have come back home after COVID so you can get a, a, a befitting burial for the work you have done. Sitikuwe, siabule la mashongwa. Sitikuwe, <laughs> Siazila ngom sebenzwa kwa wenzi leyo emazwi wasi mbona kana si manati si si njengo ma si nje nje singa contributor two people into a group of twenty people who came to save Tanzania from the disaster. Thank you very much, Mangwa. Nisi abule. Thank you very much, Mrs. Uh, Koluswa. You spoke. Uh, it's very clear in Doba that family, all of them are activists, and they understand the, the history of this country. I just want to confirm and, and say to you, uh, and Koluswa, as the Department of Sports, Arts, and Culture, the history of these 20 heroines will not be forgotten. A documentary will be done on them. <clears throat> we just want you to have that comfort that that documentary will be done. Now, whilst we're talking about these 20 nightingales, we still have the survivors, those that are still alive. I am going to call upon uh, Uma Mumsumbela, 
Usis no sipo. Agafuni dating wu and to come and speak about her friend. She is one of the 20 nightingales. She is still alive. We are fortunate enough that we are able to see her. Malibongwe. Ikama la makosikazi. Watinda bafazi. She, don't worry, at times she speaks uh, Swahili, at times she speaks Zulu, at times she speaks Sutu. She knows all languages. She's a proper internationalist. Now, over to you. Can you come and put it low? Uti, she is shy. Mshumbe. Just pick it up for me. And close, and close the bullet. Mandi bully, se mandi poti, se guni nonke betu. Tatu minister. Tatu minister. Ladies and gentlemen, let me say hi to all of you. If you like, you can say low. I've said hi. You can say low. Yeah. Um, in all honesty, I honestly do not know where to start. I don't know where to begin. Go back. So we had that link, your mama abangama pele. I think it was in the beginning of November of 19 it was the beginning of November 61 beginning of November 61 Ndasuga Echautini Diao Sebenza Eastern Cape um, I was recruited by the Red Cross Clinic in Ado um, when I got to Ado, Ado is in the Eastern Cape. Yes. Yeah. When I got to Ado, I found there were at the, there was a clinic and there were nurse, nurses working there. We all opted for the clinic because it was a better play, paying employer. So that figure like a, a, a Ado, that figure like a, 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 a just a small humble dwelling and I stayed there for a couple of days when started work and uh, at the end of the week um, the other girls colleague was really not in Ado she was in Kirkwood colleague and Victoria were in Kirkwood so at the end of the week the transport used to go pick up Collega and Victoria from Kirkwood and then come down to Ado to pick us up. We're going to spend a weekend a new bright with family. So it was Collega and Vicky arriving and then Mrs. Getty, Mrs. Uh, Majola, Nima Mabizela, Stanley Mabizela's sister, introduced me to Collega. Collega was there with Vicky we were arriving at Friday afternoon. We were going to go to a new bride. And Collega and I sort of exchanged glances. And I discovered something in Collega, a spontaneous, beautiful, very naughty smile. She, she, just, she just responded. 
and out of her oozed out a lot of beautiful caring. Of course, mischief, a lot of mischief. And uh, she was sort of, we're talking, Ungubani, and Ungu no Siko, Ungu Velapi, Kauting, or when Ungubani and Ungu Kolek, Ungu Shala, you bright and dim. Okay, fine. That was the beginning of the story without an end. I guess I go to Gasapega get a bye. When we got to a new bright, I didn't spend the first weekend with Kolega. I spent it quite at um, a store. Um, and then after the weekend, we agreed we're going back to Ado again. So we went back to work. And then at the end of the second week, that's when things started happening because when we went to New Bright, we found a Buji, we called him Bud Govan, Govan Mbeki, who was busy up and down looking for nurses to take to Tanganyika because the British nurses were on strike. They didn't want to work under Nyerere. They were packing their bags. They were going back to the United Kingdom. So Ugovan in Port Elizabeth had to run around and ask who, who's keen to go, who wants to go. So he, he was able to talk to, to Kolega Nosipo, Victoria Magola, Mary Jane Sotanyo, no, Edna Mkavaza. So the five of us, Volunteered good I says a one book of govern. Near Peace Peggy Tanga Nick, who pet Tanga Nigga as us. Where is Tanga Nigga? We said somewhere, somewhere in the north, you know, you know. You pass Nyasa land and then you go to Tanga Nigga. So it was, we agreed we were going to go. So we had to pack our bags. But the question arised how do you resign? Oh, uh, okay. No, we're not going to resign. We're going to skip. We're just going to disappear. So three of us disappeared. But Edna Mkabaza and Mary Jane Sokanyo had to work a notice because they were both already matrons in standing. Elkien. Elkien, Livingstone. Elkien. The two were matrons, so they had to serve a notice. So we gave them the chance to serve a notice in November. And we continued working the month of November. The two were serving a notice, and we were, we were packing our bags, Kolega, Vicky, and myself. Okay. So, but there's something here that I have got to mention. It's a bit naughty, but I'll mention it nonetheless. We visited, we had a common friend, a mutual friend, I tell him Bizuini, number one, Bizuini Square, um, Mrs. Mkubela, Aida. Unum I, we thought, ah, let's just drop and see Unum I, you know. So we arrived at the Mkubela's unannounced. And we found Mrs. I had a guest, hmm, very handsome young man. Hmm. Okay, so Usis Aida introduces this beautiful, handsome young man to us as my brother, Uzola Square. Oh. Okay. Uti is here on holiday from Natal. He's studying in some university in Natal. Hmm. And then, <laughs> and, uh, okay. We were, we were young and beautiful then, you see. And then, and then, Aida sees us home, bye-bye. Our colleague says, you know, Sipo, he almost left. <laughs> and I'm saying, oh, well, you're welcome. Come back, come back. And there was such a chemistry between Zola and colleague. Yo, 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 yo. And this was a week or two before we left. 
Ditikuye mamela ke kanina. Funegu iliba lele ntoka zola. Because we have a plane to catch. And Uzola has to go back to Varsity. So my senior telling me, you know, Uti, you can in a go to Uga Wambon, um, I say, yeah, mm, I did, I did, I did, I did. Anyway, okay, we packed our bags and the two set the notice. And one afternoon, the three of us disappeared and the two appeared. And we left by train from Epai to we were heading for Joburg. So there we were, the five of us in a train overnight. And we arrived in Joburg the following morning. And then, okay, disembarked. And we didn't know that somebody had been already was asked to come and pick us up. And there was this other handsome young man who came to, to pick us up. Ningobani, Nini in a villa, a pie. I will see it when I'm Ungubani. Dingo Tab. Oh, Tabo, Tabumpe, Tabumpe. So Tabo took us from Park Station, the five of us, to a building called Makosa House in Joburg to wait for we don't know what. Anyway, we waited at Makosa and Tabo goes downstairs and comes back and says, oh, there's a beautiful lady downstairs. I don't trust her. We need to walk out of here because I can see police raiding us. Just then, Duma arrived. So we bundled into Duma's car. Duma drove us to Fordsburg, the five of us. So we got to Fordsburg and we met who Ahmed Kathrada, yes, Ahmed Kathrada. So we sat in Ahmed's house, waiting for the gang, Yasser Joburg and Durban. There was a they were recruited from Durban, seven or eight of them, and eight from Joburg, okay. We sat there for quite a long time. The Joburg lot a, a, arrived, and the Durban lot never arrived. They never came, they, they just didn't. Teacher. And so Joburg and Port Elizabeth bundled into a bus to Betuana Land. It wasn't Betuana then, it was Betuana Land. Okay, that was fine. We got into the bus. There was a, an African young man driving the bus, and there was a white student. <laughs> yes, a white student from the Vits wearing a collar and looking, uh, posing like a priest. Mm. And then he, he was going to be our protector. Should anything arise, he was going to be, to stand in the gap. So we started driving without the lot from Devon, okay? But the Jobek lot was the Banija can't call colleague's sister was there. There was that surprise now corner. Where are you going to? I'm going to Tanganyika. Oh Mama, why us? No, the parents don't know. How can both of us go? One of us has got to stay. There was a big dialogue. And finally they agreed that Masin and you know, we'll see, you know. So the bus took off to Batrana Land. And we got to stop at Zerast. Colega says, hey, policeman, we are going to be arrested today. I said, no, come on, we won't be arrested. They were all so drunk anyway. They had had quite a bit, you know. They didn't search us, they didn't question us. They saw a white priest and we were allowed to pass. So off we went to Botswana land. And um, we got to China Land and were housed by Tate Fish. I'd never known Tate Fish's other name, but he was called Fish. So the five of us stayed in 
the, not the five plus the Jobe ones in Fisher's home overnight. And out of the blue, the next morning, the Deben lot arrives. So we're all cramped up in Fisher's house in Lovatsi. Oh, <laughs> colleague says, hey, it, it would be so nice when the police pounce on us. We're all going to jail. They took a man, colleague, a man, stop it. <laughs> I said, no, nah, it's stocks in there, so eat. <laughs> so there we were in, we, we spent Christmas in Lobatsi. And what, what I remember is the meal we had, our Christmas lunch. The first, the first week we were alone. The second week we were joined by Ujo Mudise and Ndate Tom Ngobi. And another one, I think, John Gadimeng, Gadimeng, yeah, the three gentlemen. So for Christmas, the three men went out hunting and they brought home rabbits, meat. So we had rabbit roasted and boiled for lunch Christmas. I never forget Christmas, 1961. We had rabbit meat for Christmas, hunted by Joe and Tom Gobi. So we stayed there in Lubatsi until message came that Dar es Salaam was in touch. We should pack our bags and move to Francistown. So from um, Lubatsi overnight, a train that was going to Blantyre in Nyasal. It was called Nyasal and then. Yeah, it was Nyasal and then. So we went in, with, by train overnight to Francistown, waiting for a chartered plane from Dar es Salaam to come pick us up from Francistown to Dar es Salaam. So overnight on the train, morning, Francistown, we spent a week or two very unpleasant week or two because we had no beds. We slept on a, on, on a cement floor. We shared the cement floor, we put a blanket and a colleague and we sort of cuddled together in the, fortunately, Francis Town isn't cold, so we cuddled up there in a colleague. Oh, done in our one And then word came that the plane was arriving the following morning, which was, um, the 18th of January, 1962. We took, we, 1962, some of you were not born. <laughs> well, most of you were not born then. So on the 18th of January, 1962, we left Francistown for Dar es Salaam. We stopped over in Salisbury, which is today Harare, to refuel. And we took off again, and then we stopped again in Mbeya to refuel, took off again to Dar es Salaam. And we arrived in Dar es Salaam to a beautiful reception organized by, by O.R. Tambo. Yeah, there was O.R. Tambo, the Minister of Health. And um, there was a very interesting man there, a Tanzanian. I don't know, I don't know if the minister, Tate Fundikira, Chief Fundikira. He had five wives. <laughs> okay, we, OR put us in a hotel. We spent a, a, night, a night over in the hotel. And the following day, we had to go to the Department of uh, Health to be posted. Mwanza, Iringa, Mbeya, you know. Godwamna, God, I was left at Dar es Salaam. <laughs> so we parted. We parted ways with Kolega. That's when we really parted, you know. He, she went to Iringa, 
I remained in Dar es Salaam, but we kept in touch, you know. Do I still have time to talk? No, ma'am. <laughs> but, but wherever, to, wherever colleague I was, she did a sterling job. Oh, she did a sterling job. We had a language problem. We spoke through uh, interpreters, okay? Sometimes the interpreter would interpret wrong. <laughs> and then you'd be surprised why things were going wrong. <laughs> did a st she was a nurse per excellence. Oh, she was a nurse per excellence, you know? Tele uh, she would telephone and say, you know, Sipo, language problems, my friend. <laughs> I did not know, I didn't know what blood was in Swahili until I was told Damu. <laughs> but Tuna Kolega was a nurse. And uh, can I say something very unpleasant? Yes. Yes. South Africa has got very few nurses. Yes. When I say nurses, I mean caring and loving. Yes. We'll talk about that one one day. Nivile Kemos, since I ask you again, you mean in a dialogue. Um, thank you so much, Anosipo. I know that we cut you and we want that story, but you will be recorded. Um, my co program director says to me, When is the Nurses' Day? So I'm saying to her, the International Nurses' Day is on the 12th of May every year. So she says, we must organize it. She must come and talk. So there's a commitment already that we will organize that International Women's Nurses Day. But uh, now we've heard the story, the nurses that left uh, in the 60s to go and contribute to, as per the pledge, as per their belief, to go and contribute to the welfare and the health of the continent. Now let's hear the nurses today. I'm going to call upon now. We've heard the nurse, a legend, a retired nurse. I'm, I'm going to call now the president of Denosa to come say a few words. And I know that he's not going to be that long. <laughs> that I'm, that I, I'm promised. But it is important that we are able to link the two. Yes. Come, 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 President. Uh, thank you, Program Director. Maybe I must just greet the co program directors as our DMs. Um, uh, just as the protocol would dictate. I would be making a mistake if I do not greet uh, our former president. Once a president, always a president. <laughs> At least that I know from international work that it doesn't break. So she is our former deputy president, but when you call her, is the president, and that's it, fully fledged president. <laughs> mom, mom, bale uh, come bed. My tradition doesn't allow me to call the first name per se, but <laughs> because of the respect I give, I accord to her. But also, let me also greet the, the minister in the presidency, Minister Ramkhupa, as well as the Deputy Minister of Health and the MEC for Health in Gauteng, our chaplain. I think by protocol, I can say everyone is covered by attendees with a special greetings to the family and thanks for them acceding that we do this thing. Because it was just beyond the family. It is beyond the persona. It is beyond the person. For Mam Kolaka has thought very hard and understood that she has an, a responsibility in life which is what I call understanding the purpose of oneself in life. So she felt it was very important 
to agree just with the others. And we are very glad that we still have, you can see the, the recollection of Mam Shumpel. She recollects as if it happened yesterday. So she's one of the heroines that we can say she is retired but not tired. But over and above that, the memory of a young person. We really appreciate that. Maybe I should say that can only be a nurse who does that. Because every minute detail must be recorded and understood clearly. So I'm very proud to be a young nurse and moderately young nurse. But we have many other young nurses. The point I want to drive home is that all of us need to be mentored. These memories are very important for our country. The history is very important for our country. If not recorded, nobody will know about it. In fact, we must, we must, I must say this without necessarily complaining because I want to offer that we, we need to be objective and find a way forward to get proper recordings of the history of nursing. The history that we know in 1907, Cecilia McGowan was the first black nurse to be registered as a professional nurse or registered nurse in South Africa. We know about it. But nobody knows that what was the difference between the apartheid system and between the colonial system. During the colonial system, before Cecilia McGowan was, record, was, was registered, it is that you would be, as a black person, sit, write the same paper that is written by a white counterpart. But when you pass that paper, you would never be registered as a nurse. But you have passed the paper. When your white counterpart would write the paper and passes and gets registered as a nurse. But a black person, because of your skin, you would not be registered. That is the history of nursing that which most people don't know. We just know Cecilia McGowan was the first one. But beyond that, there are many nurses that have worked in our country. They've made a tremendous contribution to the struggle. We may all remember, as some of us may not even know, but some would know. And besides Cecilia Makiwan in 1908, we have many. Mama Nunzikelela Abetina Sisulu was a nurse. I remember sitting with her when she was at that time fragile. But she would say we were riding bicycles. I had the privilege to see her when we went to honor her while she was still alive. She would say we would ride bicycles in Click Town, going to deliver mothers in their shacks and their houses. That was the struggle of a nurse at that particular time. Some of us don't really know the recollection of how a great clinician Mama Sisulu was, in as much as Mama uh, Adelaide Tambo was a good clinician and a strong midwife. Those who were there would speak fondly of how good she was as a clinician. But beside that, some of us do not know that Mama Sobu with Veronica Zondeka was also a nurse. I'm calling these names because they are also known in the struggle. They are never known for being nurses. It is us who must record this history and it must be spoken about. Also, Mama Nonyamezel Victoria Mkayenge was a nurse before becoming a lawyer. But nobody remembers her as a nurse. Which, it then goes back. When Mama Colleague, I went to Tanzania in Tanganyika. At some point, they had challenges. Somebody who was in the struggle in the camps in Tanzania tells me they had to work and end the little penny. At some point, O.R. Tambo will say to them, go, to, go and work in London because there was a problem in Tanzania. They worked in London and end the little they end. When they came back, the money they end. They bought food for our struggle heroes who were camped in Tanzania with their money that they were supposed to be feeding their family only. But they believed in the sacrifice for a black nation of Africa. They believed that and the truth of and the ethics of nursing, that it goes beyond your nationality. It goes beyond your race. And they contributed immensely and assisted uh, Tanzania at that time. They knew that the colonial wars created by our, uh, the Berlin Conference in 1884 did not mean anything to the human race and in particular to the black race in Africa. So I do call this to say, lest we forget 
that when COVID-19 came in our country, it was the first time that our country started appreciating nurses. And I'm sorry to say this. That is the reality. Let me tell you how fearful it was for a nurse to wake up and go to work at that time. They never knew when they wake up in the morning, they will find their children alive when they come back or not. They never knew they would carry a disease back to their children at home. But they woke up every day. Do you know that at that time, when the taxi, rank, the taxi to go to work was 10 rand, it was upped or doubled. Because the taxi was not full by people who were going to work. It was few nurses who had to go to work to save the many lives that were there. Painful it is when some of them would say, I saw my colleague dying. Painful it is when we stand today, I know of a nurse and nurses, one of whom had a, a, a collapsed lung, lung one-sided lung, bilateral collapse. Even to date, she's not able to go back to work because she caught COVID on duty. And at some point, it's not a criticism. We all know that nurses in the clinical space, they were bought gloves that were written, not for using the medical fraternity, in the medical space. And they used those with the hope that the gloves will protect them. And they died, some of them. I'm saying, what do Mam Koleka did with the many was to save the humanity and the nation in Tanzania. The many in South Africa have done so even during COVID-19. Lest we forget this contribution, our history will be doomed. We must remember that during the 12th of May this year, and we make sure that the history spoken here is properly recorded. We have the books. We can't always, when we talk nursing, we only talk about 19 gay. Do you know that there was Mary C. Cole, who was a Jamaican nurse, in the same Crimean War, but it's never written in the history because she was a black person. Let's start as South African, as Africans to write our own history and elevate it, to know that nursing was pioneered by Nightingale, but parallel to Nightingale, there was this Jamaican nurse who never is recognized by history, but she made a contribution. And so did Mam Koleka and many in South Africa. Only us can save our own history. Let me thank you very much for listening to me. I am very grateful that you were able to listen. Thank you very much, Program Director. Thank you, Mongameli. Uh, 12th of May, we have a date. Um, colleagues, we, we, are, we don't have much time. Kodwake, now I am going to call upon the High Commissioner of Tanzania, uh, Major General Salim Milanzi, to come and say a few words on behalf of the government of Tanzania. Honorable Black Mbete, the former Deputy President of the Republic of South Africa. Um, Honorable Ram Koba, Minister in the Presidency, uh, Planning, Monitoring, and uh, Evaluation. Honorable um, Sister Mafu, I didn't know that. <laughs> um, Honorable Tolashe, uh, family members, ladies and gentlemen. But let, let me also recognize uh, the presence of uh, the surviving member of um, of the the twenty nineteen girls, and um, when she was talking about uh, Chief Fundikira with the five wives, I said I should hasten to make it a point that I have only one uh, one wife, <laughs> and uh, I'm sure if she had more time, she would have uh, spoken uh, at length about uh, the way she was in the rescue team, in the rescue team on the mountain Kilimanjaro when you had one of the uh, very famous person collapsed on top of the mountain uh, Kilimanjaro. Am I right? Uh, yes. So she has uh, many stories that she can actually uh, narrate uh, beyond uh, the nursing uh, profession. 
she was actually in the uh, rescue team. Um, the, the late, uh, the late uh, colleague, or Mrs. Shaban, as uh, she was affectionately and commonly known by our friends in Tanzania, together with their fellow 20 nurses who arrived in the then Tanganyika, and now Tanzania, have played a very important role in the medical sector in our country. And uh, to get a clear insight of the important role that they played at that time, uh, when independence, independence in 1961 is actually instructive to understand uh, the situation in the country at that period. As a newly uh, independent country, Tanzania, then Tanganyika, was economically very poor, undeveloped with undeveloped uh, infrastructure, and of course a big shortage of experts and the professions, including the med in the medical field, uh, of course due to various reasons. Uh, the colonial masters at that time, or colonial masters, uh, made very little efforts uh, to train enough professions uh, in those areas. Uh, and those few who were there opted to leave en masse after independence. This is the story which has already been uh, said. As most of you uh, already know, uh, Tanganyika initially uh, a German colon colon um, colony until the First World War. Uh, when the League of Nations placed it under the British uh, protectorate. It was therefore not really a colony, uh, and there wasn't much interest to develop in the same way as in the other uh, British uh, colonies. That explains the dire situation of the shortage of the expertise that the country was immediately uh, in uh, after independence. And it is hardly surprising for some of us who remember that even when the former OAU decided to establish OAU Liberation Committee in Dar es Salaam, some would actually doubt uh, whether a poor country like Tanganyika at that time, it will be able to shoulder that kind of responsibility. But the determination uh, was clearly there. So one can understand a very big relief that after the usual friendly discussion by our forefathers, uh, the late Molim Nyerere and the late uh, Oliver, uh, uh, Oliver Tambo, Tanganyika was able to receive a group of, the, of those very dedicated nurses, including Mrs. Shaban, who became part of the society and worked exceptionally well in filling the gap left by the part, departing uh, British nurses. Indeed, this is the story of the unsung heroines who were part of the liberation struggle and helped very much to cement our relation between the two, uh, the two countries. And for Mwali Munyerere, uh, this was also a fulfillment of the Pan-Afghanism uh, vision. Uh, it was uh, in line with his uh, Africa Panism, Afghan Pan-Afghanism dream for him to request for an assistance from a friendly African rather than to beg uh, the British to remain or ask for assistance elsewhere outside the continent. It was also part of the Africanization program uh, that, was that this newly independent country had started at uh, that time trying to fill uh, the white-held position by African across the board. Now, um, the story of late uh, Mrs. Shaban and the, the 20 nurses reminds us of the, f the three main things. First, Tanzania and South Africa relations are very much deep-rooted. Not only about the military camps and the barracks, but also well-rooted in other sectors as well. I wish also to point out there, for example, even the first speaker of the National Assembly of South Africa, uh, the late Dr. Uh, friend Gingwell was also the first managing director, managing editor of the government newspapers that the Standard and uh, Sunday News in Tanzania, appointed by the, uh, the late Molim Nyerere. So, um, secondly, uh, the relationship was not only about the leaders, not only the late Mali, uh, Julius Kambaragi Nyerere and the late Oliver Tambo. More so, it was about people to people interaction. The late Mrs. Shaban, even after retiring 
in 1991, 